we're here today uh, interviewing Gary Vaynerchuk, and uh, I want to give you a few of the headline points about Gary. Uh, really interesting guy. Started with a family business that was a wine business, built it from two million to sixty million dollars, uh, largely using social media. Uh, he became a New York Times bestseller. He built a massive personal brand with over a million Twitter followers. Uh, he is an early investor into businesses like Twitter, Tumblr, Evernote, which all went over a Not billion Evernote. dollars. Not Evernote. Well, Twitter and Tumblr, well, you know, two out of three. Uber, Uber, Uber yeah, Birchbox, all, all over a multi-billion billion dollar <laughs> businesses. Uh, and, um, and has a massive goal to own the New York Jets, uh, which he tells everyone about all the time. Uh, so Gary, uh, thanks very much for, for doing the interview. Let's um, have a few, few questions. I saw you speak in Web Summit, and you started the talk with something that blew my mind. You said, you are living in the most incredible opportunistic time in the world, and yet you're blowing it. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean that the internet, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys heard, there's this thing called the internet. The web. Uh, the web is really, truly only a 18 year phenomenon in the, in the United States and then slowly but surely everywhere else. So I'm sure there's some nerds watching right now or in the crowd, I know it's been around longer, but the consumer web, when normal people went into a computer and would do things. You're talking about something that's not even 20 years old and there's a platform that has basically what it's done is it's collapsed everything in the middle. Anything that used to be in the middle is now vulnerable because the infrastructure of the internet allows one to build a personal brand through making content, to publish a book, self-publish instead of a publisher, to not have another human being decide that he or she has the ability to do X. If you don't understand the fact that that is the single biggest thing that has ever happened, you're missing the basic point. What's happening now is now, 18 years later, we're at scale of people being connected. I mean, there's people in Africa who don't have fresh water, but they have cell phones. I mean, we're living in a very incredible, credible time. And so, when I say we're blowing it, I'm very concerned that a lot of people that are paying attention to all of this, they think, oh, well, Facebook's happened and Airbnb's happened. They think all these things have happened. We have not even started. This has not even begun. When you look at what the world looks like in 20 years from today, when I look around the crowd, and I'm sure people watching, there's a lot of people that are gonna be around in 20 years. You're gonna be flabbergasted that you let all this opportunity happen because Uber and Airbnb, which are two companies that are completely changing the world, are less than five years old. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is just starting. Snapchat turned down a $3 billion offer. The company's 30 months old. If that, and so I think we're grossly underestimating the true impact, the scale in which all this is happening, and so that's what I think. Yeah. So um, you do all sorts of stuff. You're, you're involved in VaynerMedia, you've, you're publishing books, you're involved in like 40 different uh, fast growth companies. How do you answer the question, what do you do? That's a great question. Um, so I travel a lot, and I remember five, six, seven years ago when I would fly back into the States filling out the form, it would say, what's your occupation? And it was for a while, it was a wine merchant that was easy, but then all of this stuff started happening, I was like, what am I? And it's really interesting, even as early as 2006 and seven, the word entrepreneur had a pretty negative connotation. It's amazing to see in the last five years the word entrepreneur really go from loser that had ideas to the single coolest thing going on right now. So, you know, I, I tell people I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, cool. So, um, in this world of technology, people don't normally think of books. And by the way, I'm incredibly disappointed with this book. It's got nothing to do with boxing. Yeah, um, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> myself. <laughs> That's great. Um, you, you wrote a couple of books, New York Times bestseller. What sort of impact did uh, writing books have on you? Well, I, you know, the biggest impact writing books had for me was the first one impacted so many people's actual lives that the way I feel, and today I was fortunate enough to have people come up to me and tell me my life changed because of Crush It. Um, the biggest impact it's had, it's just made my life better, right? The, the, the fact that I get multiple emails every day of my, just take a step back. People listening on the podcast, everybody in this room, Every day of my life, I get between one, I mean, a day doesn't go by, one to 25 emails that start with the title, you changed my life. It's fucking nuts. You yeah. know, it's yeah. an incredibly humbling, almost difficult thing to actually really comprehend. And, and complete strangers. Uh, I get tweets. All strangers, I get, right? I have six friends. I you get know? tweets that say, I'm in the bath with you right now, getting people reading my book, and, and that's kind of weird as well. Yeah, that's very <laughs> weird. 
Uh, okay, so you're known for brand building and you're very good at building big, uh, big brands and getting profile out there, but you also talk about products. So a lot of people right now, they're, like, they're trying to build a product um, and one of the things that doesn't work with products is going out and marketing products the way that people used to. What do you talk about when you're advising a firm on how to build a great product that is going to get talked about? Well, I mean, pro everything, product, I mean, I think everything's a product. I think we as human beings are now a product. So I think everything's a product. So I should first say that the advice that I give to a human being trying to become the cookie queen versus Mountain Dew or Dove or my $8 billion brands that I work with is actually basically the same. The only difference is execution. When you have millions of dollars to spend each year to build your brand, you do different things than when you have zero dollars. So the biggest thing I say is to actually live in the year that we live in. The biggest thing I want people to do is actually market like it's 2014. The idea of not recognizing that Snapchat or Instagram or Pinterest are real places to do real things with, and when they're new, they're more fertile, so you get bigger return on your dollar, is a huge mistake. Yeah. Uh, so, um, can you I just could, say something? Yeah. We can go over a little bit. You can sit down and relax. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, so you've got a million Twitter followers. Um, is that exhausting or empowering? It's um, flattering. Flattering? Yeah. And um, so you did really well from the, the early investments you made. You, you did really well with you know, sort of Twitter and Tumblr and and I wish Uber I had more money back ones, then. Right? I'd have the Jets by now. Yeah. You'd ha <laughs> uh, what, did, what did you bring to the table for them? What was it that you did for them? Nothing. Uh, I, I got in a little bit later than, let's say, early stage. Birchbox, I've done stuff for. I helped mold ideas, I did things, I engaged, I consulted, I also put the first money in, it gave them momentum. Mm -hmm. Twitter I bought from the original CTO who had a bad breakup, he was upset, and he sold me his stock. So that's how I got my Twitter stock in 2008. Facebook, me and Mark became very good friends and I bought stock from his parents. Wow. So what did I do for Facebook? I let his parents buy something, wow. you know? Um, Tumblr was one that I was a little more involved in. I built up the profile, I did some parties at South By, I talked about the product, I used it, I gave them feedback on how I thought, so. What's the key thing you do for companies now? So when you take on a company now? It's always different. There's people that want me to invest just as an endorsement and they leverage my name to round out their round and get other people to invest. There's people that use me because they know that I know marketing and they want to build a brand. There's people that use me that want to get to corporate America and big brands and they know that I'm the gateway. And then there's people in the small group of people they know that I'm a product guy yeah. and they want that actual expertise. Right. Uh, personal question for me. I'm, I'm launching my business in New York uh, next year. What do I need to know about New York? Um, New York doesn't give a fuck. You know, I think that's the biggest thing you need to know. It's a very competitive market. Don't hold back. Just tell me what you really think. <laughs> I, you know, I think the biggest thing about New York is there's no other city in the world, in my opinion, that has the work ethic of New York. It's actually quite unhealthy. Most people that leave New York actually become dramatically happier because it is a true 24-7 culture. New York is the one place that you can work from six in the morning to midnight, like I do, and still, there's still stuff going on. You know, this idea of building businesses in places where people don't have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 a.m. meetings mm. blows my mind because I'd never be able to do what I do without those five hours at the end of the day. So on this question, and I'll wrap up real fast, but on this question, a lot of people are struggling with the idea that they've got to work 24-7. Yeah. Them, that, I mean, most people in this room would probably check their Twitter in bed in the morning and yep. the last thing before, or their email before yep. bed. Yep. Um, how do you balance this stuff out? I mean, you've got a family and all that sort of stuff. How do, you, how do you get some rules around this? You know, I think that it would be really obnoxious of me to give any advice. I think the truth to this answer is it's very individualistic, right? I mean, I married a woman who I over-communicated with when we were courting each other uh, because I wanted to make sure that she understood that I was going to work a lot. And so I, I, no, I'm being very, this is actually quite serious. I know it's kind of funny. I know you got a good laugh out of the courting. Um, to, to me, it's about communication. I mean, there's certain families, I'll, I'll give you an example. Here's what works for me and I've only found it this year. And this is what works for me now. I work, truly, truly work, seven in the morning to midnight. And I mean, I leave at seven or eight and I walk in my door at midnight. Not I come home at seven and I'm on my computer. I'm literally not in my apartment until about midnight every single Monday through Friday, pretty much guaranteed, right? I mean, like, I had a very sad moment recently where I got home at 9 p.m. 
right? A, a meeting got canceled. I was maybe a little bit tired for some unknown reason. And I came home and me and my wife were celebrating that I was home early. Like truly like, what are we, we need to, ha- like we're gonna hang out, like we have time. <laughs> and then I looked and like, like we, literally I was hugging Lizzie, looked in the corner of my eye and saw it was like 9, 12 p.m. And I'm like, this is fucking sad, you know? So that's what works for Lizzie and I, extremism, which is now, I work a ton Monday through Friday, but Saturday and Sunday, I'm off the phone, I'm out, and instead of two weeks vacation, I'm doing seven weeks vacation. So in 2013, I feel dramatically more fulfilled with my family and with my business, but that doesn't work for everybody. I mean, everybody has different needs. They have a, I can't sit here with, when somebody has debt, when somebody has a sick parent, you know, a special needs child. There's just too many variables. What, what works? And the way to really approach this is to communicate with the other people in your life that you love and find what works for both of you. Awesome. Or three of you. So, uh, thanks Gary. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, click across and have a look at uh, Gary's half an hour talk um, that I saw at um, Web Summit. It was a brilliant talk. Uh, grab his book, uh, Jab, Jab, Right Hook. It's got nothing to do with boxing, but it's still a great book. And uh, thank you very much, thank Gary. You so much. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.